Uh, it's been a short broadcast so far, so we'll see what this one's all about. What is this question asking us? Given an array of strings, return another array containing all of its longest strings. Okay. So I don't think there's anything in here that uh, that we wouldn't recognize in terms of uh, the wording, the, the notation here. We know what a string is. It's basically a word. We know what an array is. It's basically a collection of elements. And we want to return another array containing all of its longest strings. So if you think about it, the array we're returning is just going to be a subset or a subarray of the array that we started with. So how are we going to do this one? We need to find we need to find the maximum length and then we need to find all the ones in the array that, uh, that have that maximum length. So let's do that. Make some comments here for our game plan. Find the max string length. Just wanted to specify it's the string length, not the array length that we're checking for here. Uh, and then let's say add all the longest strings to a new array. And then we're going to return that array. So we're going to say var, or eh, not var, we're going to say let max be assigned the value of, uh, let's just say let max for now. We'll, we'll declare it, but we won't assign it. And we'll say let longest, longest be assigned the value of this empty array. And then what are we returning at the end? Longests. Okay, so that's kind of our skeleton outline here. That's that's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, so what's max going to be? Well, uh, let's do that first. So find the max string length. One way we could do it would be to loop through the array and dot length i plus plus. Yeah, don't forget the dot length there. Sometimes I do, and it, it's really puzzling why it doesn't work when we do something like this. So dot length, you gotta include that. And then uh, basically what we want to do is let's say max is gonna start at zero. In fact, let's say max is gonna start at one because we can see right here there aren't gonna be any strings with a length less than one. We're not gonna have any empty strings in here. We're at least gonna have a length of one. So the maximum is at least gonna be one. And then we'll just say if, well, okay, I'll, I'll be consistent. This is kind of the way I usually like to do this. Element is input array at i. And we'll say if element is greater than max, then max is assigned the value of element. Okay, and then before we go any further, let's just say return max. And is this going to work? Let's find out. No, it didn't work. It's saying max is 1 when clearly the maximum length here is 3. Well, maximum length. I guess that would be the key word here because we're saying element is input array at i. We're talking about the length. So we're going to say let length be assigned the value of element.length. And that's the thing that we want to be checking here, not element. So if length is greater than max, then max is assigned the value of length. Let's see if that one works. So we should expect three for that first test. And that'll be um, hmm, taking this time. Oh, there we go. Okay, so three. And then what's the next one? Two. So this looks like it's working. It's four there. Great, we're getting the max. Is this the best way to get the max? Uh, well, uh, I'd say no. And partly because, you know, I'm looking at this syntax here and I'm thinking, Hey, you're using this for loop, but you're not actually using the i aside from just getting the element at that index. Like, it's not like we're doing an i plus one or an i minus one like we've done in previous tasks where we're trying to compare adjacent elements or something like that. So we don't really need the i. So we're going to use another pretty slick ES6 syntax. We're going to use a for of loop. So basically, the way the for of loop works, and uh, I think we talked about this briefly before, but it's going to simplify the syntax. So I'm just going to say let element of input array. And then I don't need this part either. It's going to know already that we're talking about the element inside the array. We don't need to know what the index is. We can just do it like this. And there we go. It's working just the way it did before, but a little more uh, efficiently. 
and we could probably make it even more efficient. You know, we could just say something like max is assigned the value of math dot max uh, element dot length and max. You know, whatever it was before, and then from there, is it still going to work? Hmm. Not bad. Okay, so that's our max. Still three there. Still two there. Still four here. It's working. It's working the way we want it to. Okay, so uh, is that the best way we can do this? Mm, maybe, maybe not. For now, let's let's keep that the way it is, and we'll talk about adding the longest strings to a new array. So we're going to loop through again. We're going to say let i be assigned the value of zero. Okay, there we go. So that's that's our new uh, for loop here, and we're going to be going through the input array. But am I going to use the index? No, I think I'm just going to use the element. So I'm going to use the same syntax as above. Element of input array. Great. Okay, and then we'll basically just say if element dot length is max, then we're going to say longest dot push element and then at the end we're going to return longest let's see if that let's see if that works hey okay. it works okay what a great feeling can we do it more efficiently than that well yeah we can okay so specifically uh, I guess we'll start with this one over here we're saying for element input array if it's equal to max then we'll put in this new longest thing well, there's another way we could do that. We could just say longest is assigned the value of input array dot filter. We talked about dot filter before. It's basically a built in for arrays and it's going to take a function as its argument. That function is basically going to return a boolean, a true or false value. If it's true, it'll keep the element in the array. If it's false, it'll remove the element from the array. So we'll say dot filter and uh, I'll just use element our keyword here. We're going to use an uh, ES6 arrow function just for the simplicity of the syntax. And we'll just say uh, element.length equals equals max. And that's it. We're basically saying if the length of the element is max, well that'll return true, so it'll keep it in the array. If it's not that length, if the length is not max, it will not keep it in the array. So here we go. Longest, boom. Is it still working? Uh, yeah, it's still working. Okay, great. So filter, that makes it uh, a little easier to deal with. And I could even get rid of this over here and just put the let in front of this one. So we don't need to declare it and assign it uh, as different steps because we don't really need to know what it is up here. Okay, now let's tackle this max over here. Can we make this one more efficient? Well, yeah, we can because basically we're just looping through the array and we're taking the math.max every time. So couldn't we do something like uh, like a spread, you know, math.max dot 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 input array. Now by the way, we've been using a spread operator a lot lately. In case you forget what the spread operator does, I, I think the most efficient way to explain it is that it dissolves the square brackets on an array. That's that's it. Okay, so it's going to dissolve the square bracket. So we're not using the, a single argument here. That's input array. We're using all the things inside. Okay, math dot max. So we could just say you know max is assigned the value of this, right? And then return max just to check it. Is that going to work? Oh, no. Why is that? Well, the thing is, we're comparing strings. So basically, the idea is uh, we don't want to be comparing the strings. We want to be comparing the lengths of the strings. So I'm going to do input array dot map element gets mapped to element dot length. So what a map does is it changes every element within the array. So in this case, it's taking the element in the array and it's making it just the length of that thing. So let's see how that works. Okay, great. Max is working the way we want it to. Beautiful. Oh yeah, ATD. We we could definitely use reduce. So uh, yeah, that's a nice thing. Eh? All these uh, these built-in array functions, map, filter, reduce. They're kind of like superpowers. I find they let you do such complex things with such little syntax. Uh, okay, so that's max. Max is math dot max of this. You know what? Uh, we could do this first of all. So, uh, actually not that much. There we go. So there's our maximum. And we're saying this is equal to the maximum. 
So we could just do something like this. In fact, instead of element, let's just go with an X just to sort of make it a little more terse, just so we can fit it a little easier. So check this out. This thing is the max. We can replace max with that. So we can just say get rid of this and replace max with that thing. Okay, is that still going to work? Yeah, that's still going to work. Okay, and then, uh, I mean, longest is the thing we're returning, right? So we could just say return just that. Get rid of this line over here, and let's try running that. Is this going to work? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I mean, look at this. It's like one line. We could even make it like legitimately one line if we wanted to turn this into an arrow function and just say input array gets mapped to this thing. I mean, we're just returning one line here, so we don't need anything else. And that's it. You know, this is our entire algorithm right here. We don't need anything more complicated than this. It's working. It's getting us the answer we're looking for. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. So I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to do some undos over here. Uh, a whole bunch of them, actually. Let's let's undo uh, up to that point. Okay, great. And then I'm going to do what we ordinarily do, and oops, I'm just going to pop that down there, and then close the comment. Okay, so now we sort of have this algorithm here. It's going to work. I mean, it worked just fine. We found that it, it passed all the tests and everything. But I want to rethink this algorithm because mm, maybe we can do it more efficiently. Let's see. I mean, it, it looks like this would be hard to top, but we'll give it a try anyway. So basically what we want to do now is Here's the way we're going to do this. We're going to go through the array and in fact, let me let me find a good test. Okay, that's a good one. So Okay, let's write this out. Um, what's a good color? Let's go with orange. That's that's kind of one of our uh, one of our brand's colors here. So okay, uh, I want to loop through the array one time. I want to see if that's going to work. So we're going to have max, and we're going to have longest. And we'll just do a bit of a table, sort of like uh, what we did before. Okay, so max, we're going to start it out as 1. And then longest is going to start out as an empty array. All right, so then as we're going through this, as we go through the array, we say, okay, this A here. So is it longer than max? Oh, it's not. Okay. Is it equal to max? Is the length of it equal to max? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, so since the length is equal to max, we're going to add it to the array. So now longest has A in it. All right, so then we, we say, all right, we, we've looked at that one. We're going to move on to the next one, A, B, C. And so then for the A, B, C, we're going to say, is the length of this longer than max? Uh, yeah, it's longer. So we're going to change max to 3. And then we're going to say, well, that thing we had in longest... That's not a longest string anymore, so instead we're just going to pop ABC in there. That's our longest string now, so we'll just put that in there. Okay, and then after that, we're done. We'll move on to the next one. We'll say CBD. CBD. Anyway, uh, the point is, is this string longer than 3? No, it's not. Okay, so is it 3? Is it equal to 3? Yeah, it is. So that means max is still 3, but now our longest array is going to include A, B, C, and it's also going to include C, B, D. Okay, so then, alright, we've, uh, we've got those here, and that's working. We've looked at that one. We'll look at the next one. We'll say, da, 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 da. is that longer than 3? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, so then our new max length is going to be 6. That's the length of this one. And, of course, we're going to clear the longest. We're not interested in these length 3 ones if we can have a length 6 one. So we're going to put in all of our zeds here, zed, 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 etc. And I think at this point we sort of see how the, uh, the algorithm is working. So basically, what are we doing here? We're doing three things. As we go through the array, we're saying, is this does this element have a greater length than the max? If so then we're just going to replace max with that length and make the longest array just have that element in it for now. If it's not greater, well then, is it equal to max? And if it is equal, then we're going to push it into the longest array. 
And then finally, uh, if it's not either of those things, we're just going to ignore it. You know, like we'd move on to this next one and we'd say, well, this has a length that's less than six. Ignore it. Just move on to the next thing. Okay, so that's basically how it's going to work. I'm going to clear this. Uh, actually, I'm going to clear this. And we're going to say loop through the array once. That's always nice when we can loop loop through just one time. Uh, then after we loop through, or as we're looping through the array, we're going to say, actually, you know what? I, I'm going to build the loop here. So I'm going to say for let element of input array. And we're going to say, let's make some space, if element is longer than max, then max is assigned the value of its length and longest is assigned the value of the element on its own. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing. And then uh, else, is it equal to max length? If so, push to longest. And then that's pretty much it, because otherwise we're just going to ignore it. So uh, element is already the thing that we have. We don't need to do input array at i or anything like that. We have element. So we'll say uh, if, well, actually, you know what? Just because I don't want to have to keep checking the length here, we'll set let length be assigned the value of element.length. There we go, because we're probably going to reuse that. So then we'll say if length is greater than max, then max is assigned the value of length, and longest is assigned the value of element. It's just that one element inside now. And else, if it's not greater, then we'll say, well, is the length equal to max? And if so, we're going to say longest.push element. We're going to pop it in there, or sorry, we're going to push it in there. I've got to be careful about my use of notation there. Okay, so let's pop that comment in there. Great. And we'll clean this up a little bit. We'll get rid of some of this extra room that we have. Okay, so will this work? It will. Okay, so let's see. Uh, is this a better algorithm than the other one? My argument is, I think so. Because if we take a look at this other one, okay, first we're doing a map. So that right off the bat is gonna go through the entire array and convert these all to lengths. Then we're doing a dot max. So that's gonna go through the array again. And then we're doing a filter. So that's gonna go through the array a third time. And the other thing is, I think just because of the way we made this a one-liner, I think it's going to be especially problematic because if you think about it, the first thing it's going to see is the dot filter. So it's going to say, okay, so for every element in this array, I'm going to, I'm going to ask myself, is its length equal to this thing? So basically for every time, uh, for every element in the array, it's going to recalculate this math.max thing, which means it's going to go through the array two times again. So we're at least looking at like a big O of n squared here, where n is the length of the array. Now, thankfully, the array doesn't, it's never going to get too long. Uh, it's, sorry, this one, it's only going to be 10 elements long. So we don't need to worry too much. But, you know, if these were, again, if this was like 100,000, like we saw in task seven, then this would be a big problem. It would probably time out. Whereas when we compare that to this algorithm, it goes through the array one time. It only loops through once. It's keeping max in memory, it's keeping longest in memory. So, you know, you might look at that and say, well, you, you know, you've got another array here that you're keeping in memory. Isn't that worse? Uh, I don't know, because here we're keeping more stuff in memory when we do these maps and, and things like that. So basically, here's what I'd say. I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier, that these kinds of uh, syntactical shortcuts, you know, using these uh, array.filter.max.reduce, I mean, it feels good, it, it, you know, in a lot of cases, it, it, it is going to be the best way to do it, but making your algorithm so short like this, I mean, as slick as it is, it's probably not the best for computation time, memory optimization, or human readability. I think it would be easier for a human being to dive into this algorithm and see what we're doing than it would be for them to try to decode what this is saying. Okay, so that's what I'd say about this one. Have I submitted it yet? No, I don't think I have. So let's see, is there anything we want to change in here? I don't know, I think it looks good. So let's submit that. We'll see how it goes. Boom, there we go. 
Okay, so, uh...